Welcome to the Sod Cemetery in its 60th season. It celebrates Seminole wins against the crowd and against the odds when no one gave FSU much of a chance. When you're near Doak Campbell, we hope you'll drop by and visit the cemetery. You can press the button and you can hear from former Seminole players who tell you about their days in bringing home the sod for victory and for burial. Sod Talk, connecting Seminole fans with Seminole legends. Today, two-time Super Bowl champion Seminole Bryant McFadden talks with national champion, All-American safety LaMarcus Joyner, today a New York Jet. Bryant and LaMarcus, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Doug. It's great to be a part of the side cemetery tradition. And with that being said, we have an outstanding episode for you guys and girls today. All the individuals that love Florida State football, we got one of the all-time greats on this episode. LaMarcus Joyner is joining me for this great solid talk. talk. Uh, LaMarcus, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing well. Feeling great, man. Thanks for having me today. Uh, no, no, no doubt. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, let's, you know, let's, there's so much we can talk to you about, but let's start in the beginning. You know, you went to high school uh, in Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas. You were an All-American uh, USA National Defensive Player of the Year at cornerback for St. Thomas. Uh, I mean, you can name your college. You had the who's of who coming down to South Florida to try to land your services for their university. But why did you pick the Seminoles? Uh, it was a uh, all time favorite of mine growing up. I think my whole entire household, except my um, eldest brother, uh, loved Florida State, and my eldest brother he loved UM. So it was mm -hmm. a big rivalry in my home growing up. And one of my um, dream goals was to make it to Florida State. And when I got the opportunity, it, it was no question. Yeah, and and when you finally signed. Uh, with the university, I remember that you were one of the early recruits for Coach Jimbo Fisher at that time, and you were sort of like the lead recruiter with your status uh, throughout the high school ranks uh, for that 2010 FSU freshman class that would go on to eventually win a national championship. Have you always been known to be the ultimate recruiter? Because there's a little birdie that, that's out there that said you were one of the best recruiters uh, Florida State had on that roster that led to other top flight talented players signing on with your class. Absolutely. And I think it's because guys just seen that I was very serious about football and it was a lot of those guys that was serious as well. So, I mean, I was always honest with people and they seen that and they recognized that and a lot of guys kind of gravitated towards that. Yeah. When you look at the guys that signed on with you in your freshman class, was there a guy that you kind of really had to change his mindset? Was there a player, particular player, LaMarcus, that was set on going to another university, but you kind of stayed on him, stayed on him, stayed on him, and eventually he signed on with the or with Florida State? Well, and fortunate enough, I mean, he ended up leaving anyways, but um, that guy for me was Jeff Luck. Okay. He was he was another, another uh, highly touted, uh, desired player in the country. No he was the number one linebacker, so it was, it was kind of hard you know, recruiting him, but he gave in. Yeah, I he think did. I, like myself, Tevin Smith, you know, kind of kept going at him. So that was a big addition for us. And real quick, LaMarcus, uh, talking about that 2010 class, for our, you know, fans that are, are watching us right now that might have forget, might have forgotten some of those key names that were a part of your class, could you name a few of the notable guys that signed with you outside of your outside of yourself? Uh, we had Tevin Smith, Jeff yep. Love. Christian Jones, Christian Green, Kenny Shaw, uh, Gerald Demps. I mean, we had we had a lot of great players that I mean, they also had a lot of great players that was already there. So we yep. kind of like melted in really well. But that's some of the notable names that a lot of guys might have forgot about. No question, no question. And then of course, when you get to Florida State, man, I remember you in high school in Broward being like a hell raise at the cornerback position. <laughs> but then you go to Tallahassee and you ultimately move to safety at FSU. And it was extremely productive, by the way. But how did that move happen? Uh, I mean, you know, they had Greg Reed, Xavier Rhodes. I mean, Xavier Rhodes is still in the NFL, you know, yep. highly uh, productive player. And you just had, everybody was all American. Everybody was the number one recruit coming out of high school. So I had to wait my turn. But the coaches recognized that I was a very great talent, even as a freshman, so they had to figure out a way. And in high school, I played corner, I played offense, I played safety, 
So I, you know, presented the idea, hey, how about I go to safety? Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody believed in me at first until they gave me a practice rep and they seen the range. And it yeah. was like, man, this kid got range like Rover. And that, <laughs> that, 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 you know, that was the joke. And yeah. it ended up turning into a reality after that. And after the bowl game, it was just like, hey, you're going to safety. And it was a wrap from there. And I, I, I remember hearing Jimbo, Coach Fisher, uh, while you were at Florida State, he said, LaMarcus is 5'8", but he plays like he's 8'5". <laughs> Uh, what has been your attitude when others have said throughout your playing career, oh, he's too short to do, to do this or he's too small to do this? I mean, I don't know how you say this, but I may just be mentally ill because I don't see size. Yeah. I mean, when I'm on the field, I feel like I'm the biggest guy on the field, which is clearly not the case when you watch the film. But that's how I feel. Like, I don't see size. I just, you know, you're a man like me and you you hurt like me and you know you can go down like me and that's always been my mindset just never never acknowledging that yeah and one thing i want to talk to you about and i had an opportunity to talk to jimbo about about this play as well one of his favorite plays he's ever ever seen as a coach or as a football fan was the play against was it idaho Mm -hmm. it dope campbell was it was was idaho Uh uh-huh yes Against Dope Campbell, for for our viewers that are checking us out, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. Florida State in 20, was that 2013 or 2012? It was, it was 2013. 20, the championship year. Yes. Florida mm-hmm. State hosting Idaho. LaMarcus, the ball was backed up inside the 20. LaMarcus literally traveled over 100 yards with nothing but relentless effort to come up with one of the more impactful plays I've ever seen. That's one of my favorite plays. I tell people all this all the time. When I talk about, you know, my time in the NFL, playing college football, playing against so many talented players, that's the play that always stick out to me if you want to coach what it means to show relentless effort. Would, would that be your all-time favorite play? And, and, if, and if you don't mind breaking that down for us, I, I know the play like it's <laughs> the back of my hand. But for people that are watching us, they might not exactly remember that play. Could you break that play down? And, and, and do you believe that's one of your best plays when it comes to effort, just being relentless and getting the job done and quitting? You know, the crazy thing is, B-Mac, that's just who I am, period. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I, can, I can roll up maybe 30 plays to that sort. But yeah, that's definitely arguably one of my best plays that I feel proud of. And the one thing about Jimbo, and I, I respect him so much because he's old school. You know, sometimes you have players with the stats, but no film to back it up. You know, 13 picks, but how did he get that, those 13 picks? And yeah. Jimbo, ideology was he want good football players. He want to see good plays, you know, and that's what he glorified. And that's just, that's just, that's what got us to the national championship that year. We had countless guys that did things like that. Mm-hmm. But just going through that play, I was coming on a blitz, just a nickel blitz quarterback escaped the pocket and I was I remember just chasing the guy falling Tevin Smith falling Christian Jones falling me falling yeah. those guys getting up and I was like man if I can get something like this on film they're gonna remember it forever and that that was in my mind the entire time and that gave me the will to do it to get it man done. listen man listen that that right play man that gets me fired up if I was a coach <laughs> and if I was scouting a guy that's all I need to see I don't need to see anything <laughs> else that one play tells me all I need to know about that said player. And because of that, you've been successful anytime you step on the gridiron because you have that mentality, you have that attitude, and it's contagious. It's, 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 a, it's a habit. You can't turn it off. That's you just who you are. Exactly. Right. People don't realize that, uh, LaMarcus. <laughs> when you're that type of guy, it's always you can't turn it off. You know, either if you're playing football, if you're doing something day to day, if you if you're in the entrepreneurship world, it doesn't matter. That's who you are, and that's why you've been so successful. And talking about that championship run in 2013, uh, you played on an amazing defense uh, that was full of competitive individuals, vocal leaders, yourself, Jalen Ramsey, Telvin Smith, Timmy Jernigan, uh, a long list of outstanding guys that we all remember remembered. Uh, but what was it like to play on a defense with so many talented guys? It was the best experience of my life. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why. Because you come to the NFL and you can have a team full of pro bowlers, all pros, but there's no continuity because guys are selfish. Guys want to be the show. That was the most humblest team I ever played on in my life. When you say the different names, we had Eddie Goldman, Timmy Jernigan, Mm -hmm. Christian Jones, 
Darling. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey was a rookie. He was very humble. Yeah. Uh, we had Tevin Smith. We had Ronald Darby. We had P.J. Williams. We had Terrence Brooks. But we all desired to see each other do well. And that yeah. was the difference. That's what made that team so special. Because I can go the year prior to that where we had another team full of first-rounders and, yeah. you know, All-Americans. But there was no continuity because everybody was worried about getting drafted or I want to be the star of Florida State. We didn't care about that that year. We mm -hmm. wanted to see Jame Jameis put up touchdowns. We wanted to see all that, and we wanted to see each other do well. And I think that was the difference, and I think that's why we was able to put together a special year like that. Yeah, and, and, and talking about that entire season, I think the, the one game where you guys really burst onto the national scene, like, yo, we here and we for real, was the Clemson game, right? Yes. The Clemson game. You guys go up to Clemson. Clemson, at that time, they were ranked number three. They were ranked yeah. third in the country. Yes. And, of course, that was a sod game. You know, mm -hmm. Florida State, when it comes to tradition, <laughs> when you're playing against a, 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 a highly ranked team on the road, that's a sod game. Mm -hmm. And because that was a side game, you were the side captain for that game. Mm -hmm. And you guys whipped, whipped them Tigers with 51 <laughs> to 13. Let me read off your stats just in case you forgot, right? You, you, you had eight tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack, two forced fumbles, yes. an interception. <laughs> uh, what do you remember about that glorious night at Clemson? I think that was the one night. Now, however, w despite what I just said, yeah, I might have been a little bit selfish that night because <laughs> when, when the lights was bright, I was like, I'm going to show these guys who the real one is. Like, yeah, we're going against Clemson. I remember the last time being that we got embarrassed. It was my sophomore year. It was Sammy Watkins freshman year. And yeah. he embarrassed us. I mean, they they embarrassed us and that, that wasn't going to happen. So I was going to stand out that night. I was going to set the tone. I, I yeah. can remember telling Tevin Smith, I'm going to set this off. If you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no question. And no in question. the very first play, they threw the ball to the tight end, forced fumble. And it was mm -hmm. on from there. And everybody else followed. Everyone no else followed. And it was and only appropriate that you set the tone because you, you were the side captain. Mm -hmm. it, you were the side captain. And, man, you were a tone setter, man, because that game and everything, it was just a snowball effect of positive results for Florida State. Mm -hmm. Defensively, you did – you guys did a phenomenal job. Harassing was it Taj Boyd, the quarterback? Yeah, uh huh. Exactly. Taj Boyd was the quarterback. Uh -huh. uh, he couldn't get anything done offensively, man. Do James and the crew, man, they just was. It that was that was an unbelievable game. I think that was that's uh, like I said. I think that game was the the, the kick door experience when you kick down the door, you just bust in somebody's house. Well, well, unfortunately, we did a lot of damage to a lot of people' personal stocks for the NFL yeah. and everything. I think that quarterback was the first round into that night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I heard a lot of people draft status that entire year. Uh, but man, that was an unbelievable game. And talking about that game, that side game, uh, what was it like for you to be the side captain and bring back the side that is now buried out well outside the practice facility there in Tallahassee? To be honest, now that I'm a little older, it means much more to me now than it did then. Because Jim Mode, I'm not the kind of like low profile guy. I was, yeah. I was, you know, respected by my production and just the way I carried myself, but I never desired to be out front. I never to desire to be any of those type of things, but it definitely looking back on it as we share that experience and that joy together right now, man, it, it was great. It was great. Something I can tell my kids. Yeah. And, 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 and that team, man, you played with an all NFL defensive backfield. You were mm -hmm. part of an all NFL defensive backfield, meaning every player that was in that secondary played in the league. Yes. Played in the league. Ronald Darby, Jalen Ramsey, PJ. Still uh, in the league. Still in the league. Still, still in the Terrence league. Terrence Brooks. Still Terrence the, Brooks still in the league. Still in the league. Still in the league right now doing damage, being productive. But what was it like to be a part of such a special group? I think it's just something that you can talk about for the rest of your life. Like, just like I say, it goes back to what I said earlier. Everyone was just so humble and so caring about the next man and celebrating the success of each other. Like I haven't seen or been a part of something that special ever since. Yeah. And it's so great to see these guys still doing good. And, you know, when we meet up in the NFL, when we play against each other and after the game, we get to shake hands and stuff. It's, it's just special.
It's yeah. just special. You never lose that respect for guys like that. No, nah, and, and that's the thing. You talked about the continuity and just loving your teammate. No, not tolerating your teammate, but actually rocking with them. That's the thing right. about teams. Championship teams, you don't have players that tolerate their teammates. No, nah, I rock with him. And that's right. my guy. That's my dog. Whenever he's wrong, we're going to be wrong together. You know what I'm saying? And that goes a long way. And that's something that I noticed from afar was the love mm -hmm. that you guys had for, for each other. And because of that, success followed that love. And it was genuine. It was it, genuine. It yeah. was genuine. Yeah. If, if for me, for me personally, since I know what generosity is and how genuine love is, it's, it's been a challenge because you just said something that stands out. Tolerate your teammates. Yeah, it, it wasn't guys who, you know, when the media come around, you know, speak and all this brotherhood and I love my teammates. And you got guys in the locker room like, man, this guy's just putting on for the cameras. Mm -hmm. We actually loved each other. Yeah. Like we actually called each other, kept each other out of trouble, checked on each other, you know, made sure guys went to class so they can GPA can be high enough to, you know, participate, made sure guys graduated like we were literally brothers. And I have man. never felt something like that since since then. Man, listen, listen. And that's why championships are so hard to come by, because it's not just about being the best team on the football field. It's, it's all not. about being the, 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 the most loved team yeah. on the football field, Absolutely. rocking with each other. No hating, no no animosity. None Absolutely. of that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this is something that I hope the current group of guys there in Florida State on that team can watch. Also, because you're speaking from a personal experience, won a championship. I'm speaking from a personal experience, won a championship. Championship teams, they got guys that don't tolerate each other. We actually rock with each other. We learn it. We, we learn each other first because mm -hmm. that's the first element to understand it and knowing who you're dealing with to create some type of love. I got to take time to learn who I'm dealing with, right? 100%. And vice versa for you. When you know who you're dealing with, when it comes to what type of guy B Mac is, and when I know what I'm dealing with, what type of guy Lamarcus is, now it's easy for us to create a genuine relationship. A lot of times, teammates don't take time to learn each other and figure each other out because we come from different parts of the country. Right. You know what and I mean? So you know the the main thing, the foundation of that when you when you're learning each other and you're going through that process, the one thing that's intrinsic to the whole situation is that you can look over and say, "Man, this man is serious about football." No you know, you got some guys, you know, do it for the media, do it for money, do it for whatever else entertainment that comes with it. But when you can look next to you and say, man, this guy is about football. Yeah. You fall, it makes makes that guy that much easier to love. No question. And that championship team, man, you guys had a, the entire roster was all about football. All and about getting football. to the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal, which was the Rose Bowl National Championship game against Auburn in Pasadena. What do you remember about that game? I remember uh, the guy. I remember hitting Trey Mason, blindsiding him. Mm -hmm. And I and man, him ended up getting drafted together. To the Rams. But, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to say the guys he trucked, but he trucked a couple of my buddies, you yeah. know, on a maybe like a 40-yard run. And I was like, he got to go. Like, something needs to be done about that. I can remember <laughs> just, man, running him down. It was about to score a touchdown and just smashing them, man. And that, that's my highlight of that game. But as a as an overall experience, I think it was great. I think it was great to see guys like Tevin Smith and the rest of those guys get what they deserve. Yeah. I, I felt like they deserved it more than I did and vice versa. They may feel that I deserved it more than anyone else. And that's that that's what that's what I mean. Like we we had that love for each other to see, you know, what Tevin Smith been through, to see him on the verge of almost, you know, losing a scholarship and changing his whole life and career around. Yeah. And being able to, you know, crowd that trophy in his hand. That's the highlight of my uh glory days around that time. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we highlighted so many of your former defensive teammates on that championship team. But let's transition to the offensive side. Famous Jameis. Right, he practiced <laughs> against a generational <clears throat> quarterback week in and week out while he was there and while you were there. Uh, Jameis Winston, man, uh, how would you how would you describe J Bo in college as a quarterback and as a leader? He is the epitome of a leader. Yeah. When I tell you he's a leader by design, like he's a natural leader. Like mm -hmm. from the moment he walked in, from I remember him being on him being on uh, scout team, 
Yep. And, and if you ever get him on, he, he'll tell you this. I remember looking him in his eyes and say, you're going to be the reason we win a national championship. You're a special player. Because Jimbo, I mean, him and Jimbo had the same relationship that myself and Jimbo had. Jimbo loved me, but he he hated practicing against me. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I would hit guys. I would terrorize the offense. And he would tell James, hey, throw an interception to this guy. James was tight. He would see Jalen Ramsey out there and try to embarrass him. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I'm not going to throw him a pick. I'm going to make him earn it. He'll yeah. see me at free safety and try to truck me or something. Like, he was that kind of guy. He was like, man, this kid is like, he's a competitor. Yeah. And, I mean, he he would embarrass the first-team defense, like, literally, wow. with, with scout players. And I was like, <laughs> man, this guy's going to be special. And that's 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 my memory of Jameis. Like, I just knew he was going to be special from the beginning. Yeah. I remember walking off the field with him telling him that. Yeah, I know my first experience in realizing that Jameis was going to be great. That 2013 season, first game of the season against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. When he jumped on the scene. I don't think he scene, had an incompletion. I don't I, think I don't, he had. Yes. <laughs> when he jumped on the scene, the thing for me, and you know this as a player, when you look at quarterbacks, you look at quarterbacks that are composed, that are cool. They, they, they control the moment. They don't allow the moment to control them. And in that situation, in that particular ball game, he controlled the moment. And as as a freshman, you don't, you know, we don't, we see it more times, more time done now than, but back then, you know, a true freshman, and I read sure freshman, freshman in general, don't just jump on the scene like that. No, they don't. On the road. And that mm-hmm. team had Aaron Donald, by the way. Yes. It wasn't like Pitt just had some duds out there. They got one of the best to ever do it. They had one of the best to ever do it in the National Football League on that defensive Absolutely. line. Absolutely. And when I saw that, I said, uh oh. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of hell to pay <laughs> because you know this and i tell fans this all the time if you don't have a quarterback the field is 150 yards it's not it's not 100 yards you got to go an extra 50 when you don't have a quarterback <laughs> that's what it feels like that's the thing when you have a quarterback you got more than a fighting chance everything else will work itself out and when i saw you know, that i said we got one the funny thing the irony in that is that I thought that Jameis was doing so exceptional because he was getting lucky. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know this. Jameis is funny. He's blind. Like, he don't have the greatest sight. <laughs> yeah. So he was throwing balls that he had no business throwing. I was on the sideline like, he going to throw a pick. And <laughs> he, didn't have, he didn't have one incompletion. I was like, he probably ain't got his contact. He's just throwing the ball. Yeah. But as the season progressed. And he did that every game. I was like, okay, it's real. That, and that it's tells real. you another reason why you got to really highlight that season. Because like you said, his vision was, he just got his vision fixed. Like maybe a year ago. He was blind as a bat. Yeah, especially <laughs> at night. You know what I mean? Like, man, this man, he barely got his eyes open. But that, that's just another reason just to really glorify what he was able to do. Because being a quarterback is tough as is. But being a quarterback and, not, and, and, and your vision is kind of iffy. Right. <laughs> man, man, that man, one of the best to ever do it. One of the best yeah, to ever do it. Best to ever do it. No question. So let's transition now to your professional career. Uh, before we get you up out of here, Lamarcus, man, you're going into your ninth season. You're a season, season vet right now. Yes. I know. I know a lot of young pups walk around. They might be hitting you with old, old head or uh, uh, OG. You know, you that OG status right now. That's a violation. You call me OG. Oh, yeah. Well, they can also, at least you got it understood because I know at certain points, you know, them young boys walking along, what's up, OG? You know what I mean? They hit you with that. You know what I mean? They tried. They tried. Yeah. I played deaf. Yeah. You call me a veteran or OG, you try and get rid of me. No question. No question. Call, no call question. Me young fella. <laughs> yeah, but throughout your professional career, you played with three organizations uh, the Rams, the Raiders, and now you're with the Jets. Uh, man, just how you feeling? How you feeling right now going into your ninth year, man? How excited are you about this upcoming season? And where you are when it comes to health? Because, you know, we didn't get a chance to see the Lamarcus that we've grown accustomed to seeing because of the elbow injury. But what's your health status and how you feeling about this upcoming season? I'm, ve- I'm very excited. I think Coach Sala and uh, Jets have built something very special. I think we're going to surprise the league. Uh, that's just my humble opinion. And I'm very excited to be a part of that, especially losing the year last year to a tricep, you know, mess with the, that elbow. So I'm healthy by 80%. I'm very close. Lower mm-hmm. extremity is great. I feel like that 19-year-old 
walking into Florida State. I, I still feel great. Uh, my NFL career, the NFL is much more different from college. You know, it's, yeah. it's strictly business. So each year is going to be different. You never know what mm -hmm. you're going to get. It's, it's a roller coaster. But obviously you have to do something right to be in there nine years plus. You know what I'm saying? That's why I congratulate and command and honor the guys that, you know, become veterans in the NFL because that's not an easy thing to do. You know that yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and, and talking about this season, I'm excited as well. You know, me and you are already talking about the reasons to be excited if you root for the Jets because they have improved the roster dramatically. Yeah. But we all know this. It's not all about having the best teams when it comes to being competitive. You got to be lucky. You got to be lucky when it comes to ball, the ball bouncing your way from time to time and avoiding injuries. And unfortunately mm -hmm. for you guys, your season kind of got derailed before the season actually kicked off with losing some key uh, components to your team like yourself and Carl Lawson and things like that. But also recently, the organization just drafted a new node. Mm -hmm. Jermaine Johnson, man, what, what are your thoughts on Jermaine Johnson? I know you guys have been participating in OTAs, no pads or anything like that, but just kind of going through the motions. But what are your early thoughts about the newly newly drafted uh, former no Jermaine Johnson? I mean, I have a great appreciation of watching younger guys now, especially when they're going to be a part of the team that I'm a part of, just to yeah. see what I feel like they bring to the table. I just think with his speed, his quickness and his toughness, I think he's going to be a great addition to um, the Jets. I think he's very professional at this point right now. I mean, he comes in the locker room, do what he has to do. He don't come with the rookie excuses. He don't come with, I'm bigger than life because I was drafted first round. I think he's fitting in very well. To be honest, he's very humble. He's very quiet. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting season playing with him. And, I, and I'm very excited. Although I don't think he's a pure knoll at blood. <laughs> you don't get that title. He's a hybrid. He's, he's a hybrid. He's not a free no. <laughs> hey, no doubt, no but, doubt. That's fair. But, but he he had to walk through the he had to walk through the trenches. So no I question. Saw, I saw. No question. No question. Last question for you, Lamarcus. We're gonna get you up out of here. What are your best memories at Florida State? That Clemson game, man. That mm -hmm. that Clemson night. No, no one can ever take that night away from me. It just. Just as far as at the university or game or in what aspect? I mean, if, if, if that's your best moment, it could be within a game or at the university. If that's something that when you say, man, what will you forever remember about your time at Florida State? And if that's the first thing coming to mind, then I'm OK with it. Let, you know what? But I, I do want to I want you to share some sound advice. If you had a message to the any other current group of guys that's currently there on that roster right now, what would you tell them? I think that in order to get accomplished what needs to be accomplished as far as from a personal and a team goal, don't don't lose a sight, don't lose sight of why you're there in the first place. I think Tallahassee, we know it's a great university. Florida State is a great university. Tallahassee mm -hmm. is a great place to live. There's a lot of distractions that goes on for young players who are not around their parents anymore, not around their high school <clears throat> mentors. And I think one of the biggest things that helped me was always remembering why I was there. I was yeah. there to, I promised Coach Fisher and um, Coley, he was my, um, James Coley was my recruit recruiting coordinator. I promised them that I came to Florida State to turn things around and to make it to the NFL. And I never forgot those goals. I, I kept those visions with me. I didn't yeah. lose sight like a lot of guys who got drafted, who got recruited with me and got, you know, uh, scholarships and fell by the wayside. Mm. It probably was only three people that lasted in my recruiting class. Yeah. And that's because they lost, they lost the vision. They lost, no they, they lost their reason. <laughs> I think they have to stay true to why they're there in the first place. Man, well said. All in school. Well said. Stay focused. Understand why you're there. Everything else will follow. Man, listen, man, listen. This, this is a great experience for me because as I joke with you before we got <laughs> on air, a lot of people don't get a chance to hear you talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the fans <laughs> definitely will be excited to hear you chime in about your time at Florida State, current career, and also a nice message to the current group of guys that are currently there rocking that. Garnet and go as you see that eight over there, right there, right there. Right there. I, I see it. Yes, sir. Look yes, good. Sir. No question. No <laughs> matter of fact, I'm cross-eyed because I'm checking out your, you know. 
yeah, the yeah. And all Matter that. of fact, whenever you get a chance, you whatever jersey you want to send me, I greatly appreciate whatever <laughs> one, whatever one you want to send me, man, whatever organization. But Marcus, man, appreciate you joining me here for this side cemetery uh episode, man, highlighting your time at Florida State, former side captain uh against Clemson, man, and doing big things on and off the football field. I probably will see you in training camp. I got to try to make sure I come up there and check you guys out in training Definitely. camp for this upcoming season. Most importantly, stay healthy because you know when you're healthy, you're a hellraiser. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, B Mac. Appreciate it. Right, I'll be in that. contact with you.